down thy boat! Hi everyone and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name is Dave and today we have a bit of an interesting project on the go. We have a B414 International gas tractor here. It's got some transmission issues. A uh, customer called and said that it was bound up when you let the clutch out, the tractor stalled out. So he brought it over and I did a little bit of investigation and found that uh, it was the bottom stage of the clutch pedal that when you let it out it would stall the tractor. So that means it's a power takeoff. Um, you can put it in gear, hold the clutch down and tow it. Everything moves free so the transmission is fine. It's all in the PTO section. So the first thing we did is we pulled the drain plugs and nothing but come out, come out but water. So that's always a bad sign. And uh, in the bell housing section, there's a plate, a cast iron plate with four bolts in it there that covers the PTO gears. So we drop that down out. And uh, well, I'll show you what I found. Right off the bat, you can see there's bits of bearing cage. And I'm not sure, we'll see if we can get it to come up on camera. There's a crack all the way along the plate right here. Uh, my thoughts on what happened was, is all the water in there sitting over the winter time, I don't think it gets used in the winter, uh, sat over the winter time, it froze, and the pressure broke this plate on the bottom. When everything thawed out, water, oil, and everything drained out of this section. There are two more drain plugs in these tractors, one under the transmission section and one at the rear of the tractor because there's two more low spots. Uh, all of the cavity compartments are joined by uh, passages through so that the oil is shared among all three passages. But there's three low spots, so the two back spots held on to their water but everything, the oil and, and stuff all drained out through this front section and there was no transmission grease left. And when I look up through from underneath, there is uh, the bearing on the hollow input shaft portion of the power takeoff drive on this tractor. The bearing is bad. You can see bits of cage sticking out. So it bound up and when you let the clutch out, the tractor stalls. So it's a uh, bit of a process with this. We have to split it twice. First we have to split at the back of the engine just like you would for changing a clutch and then also there's a ring of bolts around right at the front of the transmission section and then the center section, the clutch housing section will come out and that's where those PTO drive gears and stuff are that are causing the trouble. So the next step will be removing some of the superstructure and before we start splitting anything apart, I will get whatever bolts I can that you need to get from the bottom and things like that. But uh, I'll bring you along with me as I do that. So I will uh, get a camera angle set so you can see what I'm doing and we'll get started at the job. Now that we've got the superstructure off the top, we can go about uh, getting ready to split the tractor. Uh, I'm going to take out any bolts and stuff that are underneath that uh, I can get at right now before things are on blocks and stuff. While it's still on all four wheels, it's the most stable it can be. Now there's a ring of bolts at the back of the clutch housing section. There's three in each side on the outside. From underneath, there's two on each side up in the cavity in here. So I'll get them now. There's two bolts about three inches up on each side on the inside, and they're three quarter inch. You need a thin wall socket to get on at least one of them because there's a dowel pin right beside it. But you can fish that in onto the bolt and then get a ratchet on it.
So we have the tractor split and we swung the front end of the bell housing around to the side so that uh, we didn't have to pull the two heads of the tractor so far apart to uh, get the bell housing off, the clutch housing. The next step, we have to take this cap out of in here and that's held in by a really big snap ring. So for a really big snap ring, you need really big snap ring pliers. Now this cap is, uh, uh, it's not a press fit, it's like I think what they call a snug fit or a friction fit. Uh, it has to come out very straight on the way out. Uh, it's, it can be tricky. With the cap removed we can now get to this lock ring here at which point the uh, clutch housing will slide off of the front of the transmission shafts. We have our clutch housing laying on a table here to work at. And now that we have it off, you can see, you know, without any trouble what the problem is, this bearing. The cage for the balls has all torn up and shredded and the balls are all jammed up and that is what is causing the problem. So, another really big lock ring in here, and we can drive that shaft out the back, but in first, in order to do that, this is the PTO driven gear. The uh, front half of the PTO shaft splines into here, and then further back in the differential case uh, is where the sliding gear is that locks the PTO output shaft in gear. Uh, this driven gear has to be driven back out of its bearing in here. As a lock ring, lock ring comes off, that gear gets driven back out of its bearing and then with the lock ring and stuff out of the other shaft it can go out to the back. This is the damaged bearing, we have to get off the shaft, uh, so we use a block of wood as a barrier so that uh, we're not damaging the shaft when we drive it off the bearing. Now that we've got it started, we'll finish the rest of it with the seal driver. We have our bearing on a shaft now, so we're ready to start putting things back together. We use a stick to protect the shaft again and drive it back in place. On the right hand side of the shifter, right here in the shadow, there's a fill hole. See if we can, anyway, right here beside the shifter, there's a plug on top of the shifter plate. That's where you put the grease in. And there are two level plugs. They both uh, hold the same level. This is uh, also in the transmission case, right on the right at the front corner of the right hand step. On the left hand side, in the clutch housing section, 
right in front of the step is another plug here. It's the same level uh, and it takes a little bit longer for the grease to get into this section. There's a wall in between and has to go through passages to get there. So uh, manual says 24 liters. So we dumped in a fresh pail which was 19 liters. So another 5 liters here and uh, that should have it up to this fill level. We'll just watch and make sure it does. I can actually see the grease inside there. can touch it with my finger. I mean it's really close. Um, but anyway we'll put in the other 5 liters and that should have it up to the fill level. Get everything checked out. It's all working the way it's supposed to now. So another uh, Canadian Redneck project done. Hope you've enjoyed our video. Um, please like, subscribe, share. Have a great day.